Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Valagar Alvin back for some more Dungeons and Dragons online. So we are back here in the Reverse Refuge. Now, if you are looking on how to get here, I definitely recommend checking out my video, Enter the Kobold. Uh, it will go into more detail, but essentially you talk to an individual near the market bank. Then you head on top of the market airship dock and it'll take you up top, hop in the water, go for a swim. And yeah. So once you're here, uh, just talk to our quest giver. We're going to head out into the Siomi Gardens. Now, this area here, uh, <laughs> it is quite interesting as there are multiple sides to it. So in order to change from the kind of dark and dreary side, we do need to walk over to these kind of little altar style looking things and essentially just kill everyone here. It's really not that hard. And then here we go. Kind of changes from dreary to nice sunny day. Doing this will also change the enemy types that you face. So it will no longer be undead, but um, it'll be living like lions and the like. Again, there are a few altars. So if you've gone to an area like this, where we haven't actually cleared the altar yet, will still run into undead. Now heading deeper in, there are a few rares. So there's a lion that will spawn towards the center there. Again, you do need to make it bright and the lighter side for him to be there. There's one right here, which if it is up, when you approach, it will spawn in the skeleton. So it is up. And Way to go, so here we go. Once you kill the skeletons, it will spawn a, another wave. And you want to keep fighting him until it spawns in the wave with the quell. Of course, take out the quell, take out the rest of the guys, and grab your chest. Go. And get the champ. All right. So the third rare that you can encounter is actually a beholder, and the beholder will spawn on just on the other side of this door. Again, if he spawns in, um, it looks like this time he is not up. Um, and by this time, I do mean I attempted to record this video prior, um, but I was just jamming out to some music and didn't realize that I still had my music playing while attempting to record. Um, yeah, no, kind of a dur moment on my part, but wanted to obviously record it so that you can hear me. And uh, here we go. So once I'm rested up, we are going to head into the quest, which is located just in the corner here. And away we go. Now this quest is definitely recommended to have a party, though it can be soloed. It is a fairly difficult quest, as are all the quests out here. Um, despite their age, as they are very old quests, uh, difficulty-wise they have aged well. They're still fairly difficult quests, and definitely make you work for your experience. So heading in, we do see two tormented spirits, and shortly thereafter, they do disappear. So don't worry, they are meant to. As you're headed in, we have two paths. You continue heading south, or turn left, heading east, and then left, as you see, does have a couple of enemies there. Uh, but they're also going to be littered with traps, so just watch yourself here. Now the traps in this section are semi-random, and by that I mean it's not always in exactly static positions, but rather there are they are here. It's just a matter of where and uh, so on. All right, so we got a box 
here. Box here. All right. So as you can see, a whole lot of traps. So definitely recommend heading down here as it will give you a very good trap bonus. So we're going to continue all the way around the edge to our barrier. And then we're going to head around to the other side just to make sure that uh, we're able to get in. And this will also clear that shrine for us. But again, just be on the lookout for the traps as they are plenty. So now at this point we have cleared both sides um, so it is safe for us to continue all right so at this point we do need to head back to our right and we're gonna head south here now again while you're going through, you will get these barriers that pop up every now and then. In order to pass, you just need to kill everybody on... Basically, kill the wave of guys. So in this case, we have these couple. And there we go. Alright. The other thing is, at the barriers uh, right here, there can be spike traps. So again, just watch yourself before just heading straight. And yeah, you want to wake your way around the outside edge. One, clearing uh, the enemies. As again, just helps to, well, get that conquest. Now, before heading like through the path, like the centers here, Again, just head along the edges. Until you get to this room here. Now inside this room, there will be a button to push. Now, don't worry if you step on it multiple times. Um, once it's stepped on once, it does activate. So it's not like you got to stand on there or step on it multiple times. Um, yeah, it's just one push. And then you're going to want to continue heading around the edge. And each time you touch one of those little buttons there, it will open up a, another room around the edge for you to push another button. And it just keeps going like that there. This will be the one that it opened up. So 
So again, just touch the button. And away we go to the next one. Next button. And our next button. So once you get to this point, we also have a lever. Go ahead and pull that and it will drop the barriers that we've been seeing around. So this will also drop the barriers to that shrine um, as well. And then we can finally head in here. Touch that button, and you notice at this point we've almost gone through and touched every single button in all these little rooms. And once you've done that, you'll be able to enter this room here. Now this room is very dangerous if you don't have evasion, which I do not. Now what happens here is there is a trap box which should be up top here. Now in order to get there, we do have to head in. Now, it is basically an anti-gravity section. It is gonna throw me up to the very top, keep me pinned at the roof until we can make our way and pull the floor tile. Now, this is where again, having evasion really comes in handy because all these spike tra traps that you, we see will cause us harm. So again, here we are. Let's grab that control box. Bang. Now what that control box does is actually stops the, f the roof from breaking. And when the roof breaks, um, it's going to spawn in some oozes and they're going to just head their way down. So here we're going to hop in and we want to make our way through and around. So as you can see, we are kind of going. I'm not touching anything on my keyboard right now. It's just really pushing me up and around. So again, there we go. And we were able to get it. We were able to fall on here. So if you can't, not a big deal. But if you are able to fall, definitely recommend landing on these. You'll be able to pull your levers here and another one here. And this will actually open up the chest barrier right there. And then at the bottom here, we're going to head down. So if you don't get that trap at the very, very top, what will happen is it will just drop that cube on you breaking those bear like blocks kind of the rafters there and you would be able, unable to pull the levers getting your extra loot chest here at this point again touch the button head on through and we're on to our next section All right, so again, just like before, once everyone is dead, our barriers will drop, allowing us to continue to our next section. So I tend to head left, so I, we're heading south. And again, just watching these, the centers of this uh, kind of door frames, as they do like to, uh, cast lots of traps and yeah just do your best to avoid them as they really do hurt Ooh, 33 con that kind of hurts now 
And of course, lag. Alright, let's get rid of that. Alright. So, making our way around this room. No more, more lag. Lovely. Definitely just an added challenge, not that the quest was difficult enough. Alright. But what's the deal without a little bit of lag? the way east uh, and you'll see a room with a lot of guys with these mockery monks honestly they are really annoying and I definitely recommend don't getting hit, not getting hit by them gonna need to head into all these little side rooms and basically we're looking for again a lever and of course just getting the kills in general So yeah, just head around the outside edge until you can get them all. So we got those ones there. Let's head off to the right hand side here. Again, watching out for those barriers. Alright, so also on this side, you will notice we found a secret door. Now, the secret door is quite obvious. Um, it actually looks like that. It, it really, really stands out. But they actually play it off a few times in here. And yeah, so here's our door. On the other side of our secret door, we do have a valve. Now we need to pull this valve. Now that we've pulled our valve, we do want to head up and around, making our way to the far right hand side here. Again, killing everybody along the way, because why not? We broke into their door. As you notice, we did get a couple of respawns out here. Um, it can happen where depending on which section you're at you can get some respawns and the end fight actually has like an endless respawn area which makes the end fight very difficult and again typically done with two people Alright, 
So here we're gonna head north. And check our room. So here's our lever that we were looking for. Now that lever will drop down the barrier needed just behind us there. As you can see, he has a fairly large hit point pool. And again, can dish out some quick damage, though it's not like no 200 damage swing. But at the speed to which they he is attacking, it adds up quickly. All right, and because we got the optional rare, nice little extra loot box and again we want to pull this lever here so again that's the lever we're looking for now we do have an optional just heading north here it's got some puzzle tiles and of course some scorpions right here So the puzzle tiles are essentially a farce and after you turn it, you can't actually solve this specific puzzle. Um, so you can turn these pieces here. You'll notice that whichever way you attempt to solve it, there's no actual correct proper solve for it. Oh, I spoke too soon. Oh, we wanted to go this way. But as you can see, like it doesn't matter which way you turn it. It just it can't be done. So at this point, it kind of drops you into a uh, pool of water. Now, if you hadn't gone to that secret passage and pulled that valve, there would not be the water here, and this would just be a straight drop into a spike pit. So at the bottom here, we do have a lovely little chest. Grab that loot. And at the bottom here, we do have a lever. Now this lever will turn on an air jet and turn off the spikes. In order to actually use the air jet, you gotta kinda swim and jump. And at the top here, you will notice it also spawned in a giant cube. So from the top here, it makes it super easy to actually just unload on him, get that extra kill. And then we're gonna move on. So the next section here, is a puzzle now what makes this puzzle difficult um, is the fact that as you're doing it you're gonna have spawns of scorpions so again is a little bit difficult and if you need there will be a post to the wiki for the solve Alright, so the first part of the puzzle here, we need to just get the light to head forward and past the area. So it doesn't really matter which way you set it up. As long as that it kind of crosses that. So 
here we go. So it crosses those two points in the center. That will drop down our barrier. From here, there are only three runes that we actually need to light. And that is this blue one, this red one, and this yellow one here. So the solve for this specific one is you want to set this up to head down this way. And again, you want to turn off the purple one there. So you just want those three lit up, the blue, the red, and the yellow. And the reason that is, is each one turns on these various air jets. So the fewer air jets that you don't need activated, the easier it will be. Of course, you can go through and light every single one, but it's honestly not needed. Now from here, we just want to head in. That's going to throw us to the top. We're going to head across. Now here's where all these extra jets come in. So if we lit the other yellow, we'd have a jet pushing us back. Whereas this one, it's just going to be one throwing us over. And it didn't actually throw us over. There's one down here. And essentially, we need to get in and light up these runes. There are, is a total of four of them. Alright. So again, we're going to try that passage here. So we need this air jet to actually lift us and throw us over. And it's really not wanting to play nice. Um, it can, again, take a few times, but it's overly not too difficult. But, again, just takes a little bit of time. It's really not wanting to play nice. There we go. Here we are for this one. Once we have that one, we do want to head on to this side kind of do the same thing red jet to throw us over so this one will have a few scorpions now once the scorpions are defeated and you've pulled the levers up top here all that's left is to hop down and you'll notice we have three of the four. Now in order to turn off the air jet, all we gotta do is turn this tile so that this circle is lit up. And then we'll actually turn off the auto jump there. And again, we got our last lever, a little bit of XP, and a shrine. Now this shrine is our last shrine before the end fight. So definitely make use of that as, again, the end fight does have endless respawns. So with a party, I'm actually going to show you a nice little kind of cheaty stuck spot that works really well for fighting the boss. As well, I'm also going to show you how to... Didn't mean to cast those yet. How to go about. So once you're ready, you do want to step on that air jet and it'll throw you up and over the wall. As you see, it is a, you know, one spot. And as soon as you land in here, you have a giant fight. Now, I do recommend killing this group of guys before moving on. As this first one here doesn't actually respawn. Rather, it's kind of just that first initial hello boarding party. Alright. Let's 
now that, that fun part's done, what you're going to want to do is actually make your way towards the main chamber here. Uh, you can step on these buttons. And that'll kind of just add some disco balls. And essentially your objective is to actually solve this puzzle here. Now, with being attacked and enemies touching the puzzle, it makes it super difficult to actually solve it. Um, we actually might be able to solve it here. Now, again, the trick spot is you actually want to come up here. gonna want to head up to the top here to this spot here for whatever reason the big boss is unable to actually get to you up here same with the scorpion so if you have his aggro this is a nice spot that you can just drag him to and you are safe as he is attacking you from down below so you can't even get hit by his spells so you do got to worry about these little scorpions but all, all in all it's not too dangerous Now, again, if you're not able to solve the puzzle, um, what you're going to need to do is just beat on the boss. After some time, uh, basically once he reaches zero, it will hard lock one of the tile pieces. When that happens, um, it'll basically make it easier to solve each time. But as you can see, super difficult to solve with everybody stepping on it. So it definitely is highly, highly, highly recommended, and I'm gonna die. Um, recommended to have a party, just to make it easier on yourself. As again, the enemies do reset the pile tile pieces themselves. So if you want to try and solve it, you kind of got to hop in, hit a but one button, and hope. Now you'll notice one of those tile pieces are already been locked into place. And that is because he had taken enough damage to do so. As you can see, near impossible with people, or without people. So what I'm going to have to do here is I will not be able to solve the puzzle. I will just have to do the standard beatdown method. As much as I hate doing that, as you see, it's, it's actually fully reset now at this point. So even when we're not there and not working on it, these guys are still running through, stepping on the puzzle, resetting it, and it's just a major pain. So here we go. Oh boy. watching his hit point every now and then will jump up um, and that's just because another puzzle piece has been hit making it both easier and harder to solve depending Alright, 
So if we take a look now, you'll notice still only the one. But yeah, he just does a mass amount of damage. Now, throughout the areas, you will see these buttons. Uh, they cause disco balls, and essentially it's to try and dance the trash to give yourselves a little bit extra time to run through and actually try and solve the puzzle while fighting. almost dead we almost got the puzzle solved but again just an annoyance there So let's just finish them off again. As you can tell, the boss is super annoying. Large amount of hit points. We got 66,000 hit points. And there we go. So once he dies, we can solve the Guardian's puzzle if possible. Which, because we've already touched the buttons, obviously we failed the Guardian's puzzle. Can't solve it. But what we can do is grab our lock box here, which will provide us with our completion. There, 49,000. It did take 36 minutes to get through there. Decent amount of that was spent in the boss fight. And another thing to point out is it will still spawn in enemies, even after you've completed. So, you know, you gotta be quick on getting out of here. Now, this barrier here, there is a chest inside. Now the only way to get it is to actually solve the puzzle. So again, super hard to do if you're just solo. All right. And then again, if you have the use of dimension door, highly, highly recommend it. 
as again it is difficult to uh, be able to try and recall out of this quest as again the enemies endlessly respawn so I'm gonna hopefully get out here with the uh, distraction of my turret here we go so yeah um, thank you guys so much for watching it's been a blast I hope you uh, had a little bit better luck on solving that puzzle than I did I will have see you guys later have a good one all